I've been presenting data on actigraphin RBD. RBD is a disease which has a very high potential or high, high likelihood that the patient would develop a neurodegeneration later in their life. So uh, vigorous screening for such subjects would be useful in the future clinical trials and prevention, potential vaccination against alpha synucleopathy and such ultimate goals. But for now, we try to know how many patients are in the populations, and that's why we need screening. Standard diagnostics for RBD is a full polysomnography, which is costly, takes a long time, needs to be done in the hospital, and it's quite expensive, a little bit cumbersome. So the typical way to screen for a condition will be to use a questionnaire, which has also been developed for RBD, that's been translated to many languages, and there are several different, at least four or five types of questionnaires, but all of them have quite low specificity. So they are very sensitive, but uh, it leads to need of screening with the polysomnography of relatively high numbers of patients. So our aim was to use actigraphy to to after screen the patients to reduce the number of PSGs done. So actually we did that, we recorded two groups of patients. One group of the RBD patients was uh, in lab and they had full polysomnography and actigraphy on four extremities, both legs and arms. And we compared those data to mixture of uh, general sleep patients and some healthy controls to simulate for general population, so both healthy and with another sleep disorders like sleep apnea or PLM because those are very frequent uh, anyhow in the population. You know, PLM could be in up to 30% of elderly population, so we have to account for this. And the second group was only RBD patients which have been diagnosed before, so we wanted to replicate our actigraphic findings. So what we found the uh, first phase in the in-lab patient was that we could detect higher fragmentation through actigraphy and a higher amount of percentage of short uh, immobile bounds. Usually, I believe it's typical for RBD that the patient moves and they suddenly stop. And they, for a few seconds, and then they suddenly move vigorously and then they stop. It's quite typical for RBD. So I believe this is not a chance, that it's a real signal. And that's what we found, and we could replicate it in the uh, population of other RBD patients. And this parameter seems very stable uh, in lab or at home and over several days of the actigraphic recording. Uh, we are not the first to use actigraphy for screening for RBD. There have been at least two publications, one very recent from the group of Innsbruck. They ultimate goal was slightly different because they were manually scoring by humans, just the global impression of the actigram, which they found very high sensitivity and specificity. But as their byproduct, they also found very different, very similar parameter. They used different type of actigraph, but the parameter was very similar to ours. It was also quite specifically increased in the RBE population. I believe that the actigraph is very suitable for uh, machine learning to recognize the pattern. As the Innsbruck group shown that the best available neuronal network is the human brain. So the trained scorers worked very well, but this is highly subjective and you don't always have the uh, experts to score the actigraph, even if it's much faster than uh, polysomnography. So I think that we, as all the people who are recording RBD patients with actigraphy might pull the data and uh, change for machine learning. The next step would be to increase the numbers and to find someone to develop a neural network for us.